type of suture that is a straight needle. It's a straight needle with a suture material, in this case a synthetic material. Attach the needle and it doesn't require that you have any instruments other than say a pair of scissors to cut the suture after you put it in. Now you'll see that we're using a pig's foot here. We're using a pig's foot because they're very easy to sew on and they roughly approximate what it's like to sew on a human. We make a small incision for practice here. Hopefully that'll open this up a bit and you'll, you'll be able to see a gap. This gap you can widen in a number of ways if you wish. You can make a elliptical incision for instance as if it was a kind of a cut or laceration that someone sustained in a field. And remember when you see these packets of suture like this one that they have to have a picture of a needle on it in order for there to be a needle in with the suture. Here we can see a curved needle the kind that requires a needle driver like this in order to place the sutures. We won't be using that we selected our straight needle with suture and we'll start our procedure with that. Open up the package and you'll get a straight needle with suture attached to it. Let's begin by putting a simple suture in this laceration here. What you want to do with any laceration is you'll want to start in the middle of the incision that divides up the two areas into equal parts and you can figure out just how many sutures you'll need at the end. Now you want the wounds or the skin edges here to kind of pucker up a bit. So I'm going to try to squeeze this pig's foot. He's not very elastic so it works much better on a human but you can just kind of put it through like that. Pull your suture through and then tie it. You can use a granny knot if you want or we'll go over other other ways to tie but you'll see that you make a knot and you want to make a square knot if you can. Now the material I'm using here is a monofilament. See how it relaxes when I take the tension off of it? It's because it's not braided like silk or another type of material that you can use that will help lock the knots. Here they won't lock. You can pull it to the side and let it lock a little bit but inevitably you have to readjust when you have your second throw. Here we will <clears throat> try to cinch down our granny knot a bit and if you've got a thin and monofilament like this then the knot cinches down really well because the suture slides. It feels pretty much like tying fishing line. You want a total of four knots and sometimes more. And there we have it our first suture. As you can see we would just repeat this process after cutting the suture. Try to leave your sutures a little long, maybe half inch or so, so that they're easy to find later on when you need to take them out. And also if the knot slips a little bit, the suture won't come unraveled. So here you can see now that we have a laceration that's roughly broken into two parts and we can figure out just how many more sutures we'll probably need. Looks like we'll need one suture between here and the end and one suture between here and this end. So we'll repeat the procedure. Stick it through on both sides. Tie it off and we should be good. The steps for all of these are listed individually in a step-by-step -step case in the appendix of the prepper book. One last suture should do it. And if this were an arm or a leg there was lacerate in the field you probably want to remove these stitches in about oh I don't know five to seven days any sooner than that and the wound might come undone granny knots work just fine as long as you do lots of knots and leave lots of tail and there we are